This chart will indicate to you the banking outlets in the villages, the business correspondents who are available for extending banking services in the rural India. Let us have the only the first two things which have been mentioned in this. As on 31-3-2013, you will find in the banking outlets in villages, that is the branches, brick and mortar branches which I am talking, almost about 40,837. Now, to help these banks, we have business correspondents, and there are as many as 2,21,341 business correspondents. So together, the banking outlets available to the rural people in this country have increased to 2,68,454. Now, as I said, India has got more than 6,34,000 villages. Nevertheless, we are nearing the halfway through by providing banking services to most of the villages. Now, how we have gone ahead in extending banking facilities to the people? There are a good number of villages where the population is less than 1,000 people. So, it will not be economical for a banker to open a bank branch in such centers. What can be the alternative? The alternative is to provide a business correspondent who will be moving in a particular area, the villages which have been allotted to you, to the business correspondent, and generally the business correspondent moves within a radius of 15 kilometers. Why 15 kilometers restriction? That we are going to discuss a little later. So through this methodology, the banking services are being made available to the people in rural India. Now, this chart also gives about the other details like how many KCCs have been, that is, Kisan credit cards have been issued, how many general credit cards have been issued, how many transactions are being made by use of information technology, all those things are there. Well, this is only from the academic point of view. Those of you who would like to have, you can have a look at this particular chart to gain further knowledge. Now, this talks about the expansion of number of branches, BC and outlet, uh, the other banking outlets in villages, the same thing which we have already discussed. Now, a question may come as to why in India we have adopted a bank-led model uh, rather than going continuously using the information technology as is being done by other countries in the world. For example, Africa there is widespread use of information technology for financial inclusion. Now, in Africa, the number of branches which we have in this country were not to that extent available to them. So, luckily, we have quite a good number of bank branches which are available here. Number, the most important thing is the deposits in the bank is safe. It's guaranteed by the Deposit Insurance Corporation of India to the extent of one lakh of rupees. So therefore, people gain confidence that my money is safe. The second reason as to why in India we have adopted the bank-led model is that the banks in, the, in India are well regulated. The regulator, namely the Reserve Bank of India, has got strict supervision on the banking activities. The regulation is aimed at protecting depositors' interest, orderly development, and conduct of banking operations. The third reason as to why we have adopted bank-led model is the robust widespread banking system, unlike in several other countries which I already mentioned to you. So therefore, the better way for our country was to utilize the brick and mortar system of the banking system which is available coupled with the business correspondent model. So combination of branch and branchless banking is definitely a way out to reach out the such a vast country like India. So BC outlet, that is business correspondent outlets, coupled with the bank branches was one of the best methodology which was used in, in uh, ensuring 
financial inclusion. Now, a business correspondent moves in the villages with a biometric machine, a handheld machine. We can call it as a moving ATM. He carries this machine, a micro ATM, which costs hardly about 15,000 rupees, and then he will be moving from village to village within the area which is allotted to him. He is given a radius of 15 kilometers and he has to cover the villages in that particular area. So what is he going to do? He is going to act as a bank. He will accept deposits. He will allow you to withdraw money and then if you want he can collect the application form also. That is what has been mentioned in the Reserve Bank of India guidelines. What are the functions of BC which we are going to see a little later. Now who can be a business correspondent? Women self-help groups, Anganwadis, post offices, Kirana stores, fertilizer shops can all work as business correspondents. The reason is they are available. A Kirana store in a village itself is well established and people can go straight away to the Kirana shop and conduct even the banking activities. Now, according to the Reserve Bank of India circular, what are all the activities which a business correspondent can undertake? Now, the business correspondent can undertake identification of the borrower, that is he can identify, it may be through biometric machine or getting the documents. If he wants loan, he can collect papers and send it to the link branch to which he is related. He can also create awareness about the savings and other product, educate them about how to manage your money, and he can also counsel people about debt management. He can process and submit the applications to the banks. In fact, uh, this work is yet to start. Some of the banks are still skeptical about this model, but nevertheless, the Reserve Bank has permitted that a BC can process and submit the application to the banks. Nurturing self-help groups, promoting self-help groups, and joint liability groups, credit groups, all these things he can definitely play a bigger role in promoting these. Self-help group, all of us, we understand, what is the joint liability group? The joint liability group is a group of the farmers who are undertaking farming activities in a particular village. The BC can also be utilized for post-sanction monitoring. It is very difficult for a particular branch to monitor various accounts spread over in different villages. The number of staff which is available in a village branch is very limited as a result of which monitoring of accounts, particularly whether the money has been utilized for the purpose for which it has been given. In, uh, upon harvest, whether the money is being recovered or not, why it is not being uh, deposited in the bank, all these things require monitoring of an account. See, the monitoring can work, can definitely be interested to a business correspondent and definitely the load on the banker will definitely come down. Follow for recovery. This is one more activity which the banker finds it difficult. As I said, that in a rural place, the number of staff which is available is very, very low, as a result of which recovery may get affected. But if this work can be given to the business correspondent, the banks will be in a position to have better recovery and contain non-performing assets. The business correspondent also can be utilized for dispersal of small value credit. For example, if the person concerned or a villager wants only just 5,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees, the authority can be given to a business correspondent so that the ultimately the money is directly given by the business correspondent. They need not have to come to the branch and undertake the banking activities. We are discussing about the scope of activities which are being given to the business correspondent. The next activity which can be given interested to the business uh, correspondent is a recovery of principal amount and collection of interest. Well, this is the most important activity as far as the banker is concerned. If he is in a position to recover his money which has been lent in time, 
he is going to contain the non-performing assets. So business correspondent being moving all along in the villages, he will be a better man to collect the principal as well as interest and contain the slippages. Collection of small value deposits. If somebody wants to deposit 100 rupees or 200 rupees, is it economical for a person staying far off in a rural place coming to the town only to deposit 100 rupees? So therefore, this collection can be done by the business correspondent. It's a win-win situation for both. The business correspondent earns a commission on the deposit. The villager is happy that he is able to deposit 100 rupees. The banker is happy that 100, 100, 100 multiplied by so many people, he will be getting quite a good amount of deposits. So this is one more addition to the work which can be given to the business correspondent. Sale of third party products like insurance, mutual fund, pension products brings a lot of additional income for the banks. Now in India, the penetration of insurance, penetration of mutual fund is very, very low, particularly in the rural part. So in order to have better penetration, earn better income, the bankers can enters this work of selling micro insurance, mutual funds, pension products to the business correspondents. One of the activities which is important for the rural population is remittance of money. By and large, their sons or daughters are working in urban or uh, metropolitan center. They would like to remit the money to their parents who are staying in rural India. Or it may be otherwise that a person staying in rural India would like to remit some money who is going undertaking an education in an urban part or a metropolitan center. So remittance is another important activity which needs to be done. So receipt and delivery of small value remittances and other payment instruments like you know the demand draft and other thing can be entrusted through the business correspondent. Bank notes and coins. We always find that there is a shortage of coins despite Reserve Bank of India minting n number of coins in this country but once it is distributed properly there will not be any shortage. Now whether this work also can be entrusted to a business correspondent is a question but the Reserve Bank of India has given clear cut guidelines that this work also can be entrusted to the business correspondent. I had mentioned some time back that the business correspondents have to operate within a specific area. The specification given to them is that they have to operate within a radius of 15 kilometers. Quite many times this question has been asked as to why these radius rest restrictions on the business correspondence. There are basically three reasons as to why this restriction is operating. Number one, it is operationally easy, convenient to provide intensive services within the defined radius. So BZ can move on a day-to-day -day basis or maybe on alternate days to the villages which have been given to him under the 15 kilometer radius. Second, cash management is the most important aspect in banking activity. BC will be in a position to come, deposit the extra cash which he collects or if he in turn has to collect cash from the base branch, it will be convenient for him if he is given a radius of 15 kilometers. Ultimately, the cash is the cash of the bank and not of BC. So if something is lost, it is an operational risk for the banker. Third, why the BC has been given a specified area is that a customer is not a customer of BC. He is a customer of the bank. So he is just an agent of the bank. So ultimately, if a customer has got any problem, he can definitely come back to the bank and discuss with the branch manager his problems and definitely get a solution to the problems which he is thinking. 
One more initiative which has been taken by the Reserve Bank of India to increase the brick and mortar branches in rural India is they have mandated to the banks to open at least 25% of the branches in unbanked centers. So thereby, in the years to come, the present 40,000 branches which we mentioned earlier will definitely increase in the days to come. What are the other initiatives which have been taken? Mobiles are now being used extensively. So the technology is playing an important part in transfer of funds. Looking at the balance, so many activities can be undertaken through the help of technology. So one of the initiatives which has been taken now is Imagent Payment Service, which is popularly known as IMPS, is 24 by 7 electronic fund transfer system which has been developed by the National Payment Corporation of India. It facilitates customers to use mobile instruments as a channel for accessing interbank, their bank accounts, put high interbank fund transfers. In fact, the fund transfer which is required in a rural India will not, may not be high. And most importantly, in a secured manner. So this is one more initiative. The government has been remitting funds under the various government of India activities through banks and it is linked with the Aadhaar number. So Unique Identification Authority of India in collaboration with National Payment Corporation of India has leveraged a platform which has been made available for transfer of funds directly to the bank accounts of the beneficiary. So the government uh, programs like Mahatma Gandhi, National Rural, em Rural Employment Scheme, etc., all those benefits are now being de credited directly in the bank account using the Aadhaar number. Finally, we need to know, all we talked about that financial inclusion is important and all those things, but every banker is going to ask, what are the benefits to me of the financial inclusion? Now, financial inclusion is definitely beneficial to the banker from various angles. So let us look at what are the benefits available to the banker. Number one, it's a newer delivery channel. He is going to make use of the unbanked centers who are all potential customers for the bank and definitely increase his savings bank or deposit base. Customer base can be increased, savings bank account can be garnered and all of us know that for a banker, CASA deposit, that is current account and savings account deposit are very, very important. Savings account basically is a low cost deposit and all bankers are interested in increasing the low cost deposits. So this low cost deposit is certainly available in the unbanked centers and definitely it will add to the profitability and productivity of the banker. The banker is supposed to comply with the Reserve Bank of India and Government of India guidelines. So financial inclusion helps in opening up in branches in unbanked centers and complying with the RBI guidelines. More importantly, it improves the visibility of the bank throughout the implementation of financial inclusion. To conclude, the financial inclusion plans are implemented. It will definitely help to people will be in a position to transmit or undertake the banking activities electronically. In the days to come, handling of cash, handling of check will definitely come down substantially once we use the technology which is available to us. In short, it is a win-win situation for all stakeholders in the financial inclusion program. Thank you very much.